This weekend, we had a positive development in the status of the I-40 bridge that connects West Memphis, Arkansas and Memphis, Tennessee. Just as a reminder, last week, inspectors discovered a crack in one of the steel beams supporting the bridge. The crossing was immediately closed to all vehicle and barge traffic. On Friday morning, the Coast Guard reopened the stretch of Mississippi River that runs under the bridge, but the bridge itself remains closed indefinitely. Now, a lot of armchair experts have decided to sound off with the argument that this closure won't affect local economies. But with all due respect, those making this argument really should spend a little bit more time out in the real world. This part of middle America that we're talking about is an incredibly important part of our nation's domestic supply chain. We've got a 15 mile stretch along the Mississippi River and that houses 68 water fronted facilities. 37 of those facilities are terminal facilities moving products such as petroleum, tar, asphalt, cement, steel, coal, salt, fertilizers, rock and gravel, and grains. Shipping companies and cross-country trucking companies depend on the I-40 crossing, and so do the local grocery stores, industrial facilities, restaurants, retail outlets that purchase the cargo, and of course, our nation's farmers. Commercial trucking constitutes 25% of all traffic that crosses the I-40 bridge. The river traffic that flows beneath the bridge is just as important. When the Coast Guard reopened that stretch of the Mississippi, they had to juggle 60 vessels hauling more than 1,000 barges. Yes, we had a little traffic jam in the Mississippi River. It's amazing to me how quickly a problem like this does turn into a bottleneck. Tennessee and Arkansas transportation officials are still working out a timeline for repairs, but as of now, the trucking industry is preparing for a downward spiral. According to the Arkansas Trucking Association, this could cost operators and their customers more than $2 million a day, which is an amount that the industry actually cannot absorb. This means that the delay could end up costing consumers an additional $2 million a day. And depending on what they're buying, they could also see empty shelves due to a supply chain interruption. Meanwhile, the Biden administration is putting all their energy and focus into checking items off of a decades old wish list of social programs. They put forward an infrastructure package worth more than $2 trillion that wastes about two-thirds of this total price tag on projects that have nothing to do with infrastructure, nothing to do with making sure that major bridges and thoroughfares are safe and open, or expanding broadband access, or making sure that parents in rural Tennessee can get their kids to school without worrying that a rainstorm will flood the road on the way to town. Madam President, this is making the American people feel so incredibly unsettled and very frustrated and Tennesseans are pretty nervous about the future. If I could give the President one piece of advice, it would be this. If you want to waste time peddling Green New Deal policies or expanded social safety nets, admit it. Just admit it. Call it what it is. Don't call it infrastructure and then turn around and throw pocket change at actual infrastructure problems that need to be addressed right now. That mislabeling makes it look like you're trying to pull a fast one over the American people. And it makes the American people believe that you really don't care, and that's a dangerous message to send in the middle of a traumatic pandemic recovery, especially considering the prices are already on the rise. 
We see it in utilities. We see it at the gas pump. We see it in the packaged snacks we purchase for the children's Sunday school class. Even basics in the produce section at the grocery store are beginning to get out of reach. It's affecting basic nutrition. This is the Biden surcharge. We're paying a premium just to live from the moment our feet hit the floor in the morning to the time we brush our teeth and get into bed at night. The bare bones cost of living is going up thanks to these reckless spending priorities. Madam President, my Democratic colleagues need to understand that a government subsidy cannot save a family from that kind of hit to their monthly budget, affecting everything from the moment their feet hit the floor in the morning to the time they brush their teeth and go to bed in the evening. The Biden administration is creating a perfect storm of income insecurity, shortages, and the uneasiness that comes when Americans see more month at the end of their money than money at the end of the month. They know how to manage their budget and they know what they have to do when prices creep up 25 cents a dollar or two dollars at a time. Their instinct isn't to reach out to the federal government for help. Their instinct and their action is to cut back on the extras and to prepare for harder times ahead. The only way to avoid this, even now, is to make prudent, targeted investments in economic recovery, supply chain security, cyber security, and yes, actual real infrastructure projects. The American people cannot afford all the extras that are on the Democratic Party's wish list. Their income can't keep up with the inflation that is hitting their pocketbook every single day of the week. And they really are concerned of what will happen when those trend lines cross and inflation heads north every single day. I would again ask my Democratic colleagues to step back from the money printer and recognize the effect all this spending is having on American families. I yield to the floor and note the absence of a quorum. Clerk will call the roll. Ms. Baldwin. 